At Junkyard Haunts, we turn trash into haunts. So this week we're going to be making a spider cage. Our base ingredient is going to be cardboard, but we actually grabbed this tin can that I had laying around just to, for the sizing to, to make sure that we get a round cardboard bottom. You don't really need it though. You can just build this without that tin thing, so it's not really included. If you don't have one, that's fine. Just go ahead and, and use cardboard and try to do the best you can at making it round. Uh, you'll just cut out your pieces and actually just measure them up to other pieces so that they're all the same size. And then we just duct tape them together. I figured last week, since we did such a simple project of making barbed wire, that this week we would go a little bit bigger and make something that's a little more time consuming, but in the end looks really good. You'll notice that basically everything I've made so far is too big, so I actually just cut it out and trim it down a little bit. If those sides are too big, you won't see the spider inside of it. So that's why I wanted to cut it up to make it thin as possible, but still be sturdy enough and strong enough. For this top, I just took the leftover skinny pieces that I cut off from the sides and hooked them up. You'll notice that I felt like they were too long, so I actually just snipped them in the middle and then just overlapped them and taped them back together. It doesn't have to be perfect because if, if it's thicker in parts, that will make the structure look older and aged and more worn. So I think that even helps doing things like that, even on purpose. If you don't like this top, I did think about hooking up some chains to it, like making little hooks that we can easily put on some chains afterwards. In fact, the top part, I might still hook a chain around it when I hang it up on a, on a wall or something like that. If you see something that I started, go feel free to make some changes to it so it's more personalized, more unique to yourself, and fits you better. Cardboard on its own isn't really strong enough to last more than, say, a season, really, or through storage. So you want to put some paper mache around it. Paper mache is just flour and water mixed together. You want it a little bit runny, so throw in some flour, like a half a cup of flour, and just sprinkle in a little bit of water at a time and mix it up. The internet always says make equal parts, but I find that it, it, it's just better to add water to it's the consistency that you like and not worry about measuring it. When wrapping the paper mache around, you'll want to make sure you cover up all the edges and corners and especially pay particular attention to the, the part where the cardboard attaches to itself because that, that will be its weakest point so you'll want to wrap extra layers around those intersections. I also like putting paper mache on it because when you do just cardboard, you can see like inside the cardboard on the edges they're sticking up and paper mache hides that. And it also hides the, f the fact that these aren't screwed together or anything like that. So I think it makes it look way better and not just for structural support. One thing I like to do with my paper mache is actually dip my hand into the, the um, mache and rub it on the paper. I know a lot of people put the whole paper inside the paper mache, but I, I find that just tears up the, the newspaper. It doesn't make it sturdy enough. The, the wetness of the mache rips and shreds the paper. So when I dip my hand in and rub it on the paper, it doesn't put as much of the, the mache onto it so it can stay stronger. Of course, sometimes when you do it this way, you don't have enough of that mache on a piece of paper. So sometimes I just dip my hand back into that mache and just rub it straight onto those little drier parts, the parts that need the more liquid. And that way when it hardens, that part also gets really hard too. After the paper mache dries, you're gonna wanna put a base coat of paint around it. You can either paint it or I use spray paint here to just get everywhere. The, the key is, is that you wanna hide all of the paper mache with this spray paint. So it may take some time, you'll have to move the thing around. What I do is I just grab more newspaper and push it around with that so I can just spray paint the entire thing at once. I'm not too worried about letting it dry first and then painting the other side. I just go ahead and spray paint everything. 
Now we need to move on to our actual spider, since, you know, it's a spider cage, it, it needs a hold of spider. I had an idea since, you know, we're making everything out of trash to grab an old pill bottle. A pill bottle definitely does not have the shape of a spider. So I actually take like um, a grocery bag and wrap it around to make that big bump at the top and then just tape it down trying to, to form that bump to make sure it's still there and large enough. And then for its claws, its pinchers, I actually just wrap tape around itself and then tape it to the sides. So that it has the little scary pinchers. Scary, scary. While building this, you'll want to compare it to the, the cage that it's going to be in. Make sure it can actually fit. If it's too big, you know, you won't be able to get it in. And if it's too little, it will just look funny and you won't be able to even know what this cage is holding. For the legs, I wanted it to be a little bit stronger. So I actually went ahead and grabbed some sticks and just glued them on. I know spiders have more legs, but since my sticks were so thick, I, I, that's all it could really fit well. So this is actually a mutant spider cage. And this is why you want to compare it, because mine were way too big, so I actually just went ahead and cut them down to size. And then I glued the, the other parts of the leg on. Just using hot glue, you actually can just, you just hold it there until it's in place and let it dry. It could take a minute to do that, so just be prepared to, to be holding a stick and not moving. Sometimes while I'm making these, I actually, just off camera, I, I throw up my computer and I actually watch a movie while doing this. So that makes it way more fun to me. So let me know what you guys like to do to make it more fun for you. Now one thing that will help this is, is to have a better hot glue gun than me. My, uh, my trigger doesn't really push the glue stick down. So I usually sometimes have to use two hands to actually push the glue stick. So one day I'll, I'll get a hot glue gun that actually works. Now when I was putting the tape on the the front of the spider I was trying to build it up so it looks more like two bumps or two balls together instead of just like a, a cone shape. Um, mine didn't turn out too well but perhaps I could have added a smaller grocery bag or something on the other side so it would have been more two bumps. Just like the cage itself we have to paper mache the spider because this plastic and tape and those sticks will will look a little funny so we need to make it look more like a, a solid creature and at the same time paint will stick better to paper mache than a plastic bag one thing I always like to do when I when I make the paper mache is use warm water if you use cold water it starts like freezing my hands so I just I just make that simple and use warm water and my hands can stay warm while I'm doing this when you put the paper mache on, since I used a plastic bag here, it's it's really soft, so it's easy to have like applied a lot of pressure onto that bag to shrink it back up when you're placing the paper mache. So make sure you actually put it kind of gently. Use that that roundness as structure, and don't apply a lot of pressure. The hard part in the spider is getting in between the the cracks of the legs. So you'll want to take small pieces bit by bit and just slowly work on it. When you did the cage itself with the paper mache, you can use much bigger pieces just because there isn't fine details that you need to do. To age the cage a little bit, I actually took some brown paint and very loosely painted the cage. I didn't use like a, a dry brush technique. I just I brushed it here and there. Dry brushing is where you actually dip your brush in paint and rub it off and put as little bit on as, as you can. But this I needed more brown on there, but I didn't want it to cover the whole thing. I still wanted that black to shine through. So I just brushed it occasionally around. But here's the really cool part. I wanted to, to rust the cage, make it look metal and rusty. So I found this really cool technique of you just throw some glue onto your spot and then add some cinnamon, you know, regular house cinnamon. You just sprinkle it straight onto that glue and then you can just let it dry like that and it will still look like rust, 
but I find it to, to look better is if you take a heat gun and then melt the glue and the cinnamon together straight onto the thing. That makes it look more bubbly and makes the rust, I think, look a lot better. I also found that when I put the glue down, I would sprinkle the cinnamon on there and then I would actually take a little bit more glue and then push it down to make sure that cinnamon stays in there and with the glue on top of the, the cinnamon as well, when you use the heat gun, it will make it look like the rust is more inside of the metal as opposed to sitting more on top. So I like to, to rub the glue down, pour the cinnamon, and then throw a little bit more glue on top of the cinnamon. This can take a little bit of time, but I think this part is probably the most important thing out of, out of all the steps we've done. When you add this rust, you'll actually want to put it in um, specific places. You won't want to rub it and put the cinnamon every single place. You'll want to leave gaps here and there without it. When things rust in reality, it's, the whole thing doesn't just poof become rust. It gradually gains more and more rust over time. So you don't want to put it every single place. You'll want to put it here and there a little. I find my spider, since it was built around a, a trash bag, its butt area especially felt a little weak. So I actually went ahead and put a second layer. When it comes to any time you do paper mache, you can just feel it out. Like after it dries, you can just push on it to see if it's still soft or if it's to the hardness that you want it. And if it isn't, go ahead and add another layer. And if it is, then you're done. Like on my birdcage, I only just did the one layer. Where the spider, I felt like it needed more layers. And just like the cage itself, we're also going to spray paint the spider. I like to use black as my undercoat because it's easier to, to lighten it up if you ever need to. And it definitely hides things better so you don't see anything from the newspaper showing through. Now I'm not a great painter, but this spider definitely was bare. So I wanted to, to add some detail to it to make it look more like a spider. So I just found a random picture off the internet and tried to paint it similar to what spiders looked like in reality. I just used a brown and added some white to a different brown to make it lighter. And I just went ahead and painted wherever it match matched the picture the best. And I felt like the parts that were supposed to be black were just, were just too black and shiny. So I did kind of a dry brush around the blackness to, to add more texture looking to the spider. And that's where you... Um, you get your brush with some paint and then you rub the paint off back onto the newspaper, your hand or wherever and then add it to the black and that, that will give the dry brush technique to make the spider look more realistic. For the actual wire and cage part, I had some chicken wire just laying around so I tried to cut it to size and stick it inside of the cage and then I um, glued it on. You'll notice I'm using pliers here to help me push the wire down and wait for it for the glue to dry. The, this took a long time and it didn't work great. So I suggest don't using hot glue gun for a wire. You can um, staple it straight on or find a different type of glue like a, I'm not even sure if, if super glue or epoxy, more, epoxy glue would work better. But in the end, my hot glue, it is holding it together. So if that's what you have, then then use what you have. That's, that's what Junkyard Haunts is about, using what you have. So I had the hot glue. I didn't have those other things, so I glued it on, and it fits and stays. Before you finish completely entrapping the wire inside the cage, you need to put your spider in. And again, once again, I used hot glue to hold that spider up. And that's okay if the wire is crunched up and it's not perfectly pulled out and straightened because I think the bent wire and stuff actually made it look a little more rustic or even like the spider was bending the wire and trying to, to get out. Thanks for checking out that video that specific video that is right there. Don't forget to hit subscribe so we can keep making these awesome haunted house decorations. At the end of these videos, I always like to go over what I could have done better. At Junkyard Haunts, we use trash to build these, but I think this, this chain link here that I have, I mean, I had it lying around, so I used it, 
but I think I probably could have done better and just use some old wire and make it look better than this really thin stuff. Don't forget to comment below, tell me what you guys want me to make in the future so I have more ideas to build for you. Let me out! Spiders can talk, in case you didn't know. <laughs>